plant-made, plant-derived. Are you looking for natural skincare, but when you look at the names, they don't sound so natural? Often you hear dietitians say about food, if you can't pronounce the name, then it's probably not natural, and therefore not healthy. While this may be true for food substances, I would argue it's not the same for natural skincare ingredients. For example, let's take a look at the wonderful plant-made surfactant cocoa glucoside. A surfactant is the ingredient used in soaps, washes, and scrubs that reacts with water to foam up and pull the material off your face. As you might guess, the name implies part of this surfactant cocoa is derived from coconuts, which I will explain how in this video. The other half of the ingredient is derived from sugar. The Greek word for sugar is glucose, K instead of C. And the word glucoside, as in cocoa glucoside, refers to the treatment of the sugar molecule to activate it. So how do scientists turn coconuts and sugar into soap? And is this process eco-friendly? Yes. This process is certainly more eco-friendly than the production of synthetic chemicals typically found in lower price point soaps. As you will learn, it usually takes more work and many more man hours and effort to turn this plant-made products into things like soaps. And thus, the natural product will often cost more, but it's worth it. Okay, let us dive into cocoa glucoside. And after you watch this video, I challenge you to read your natural products and smile when you find this common plant-made ingredient cocoa glucoside, and you'll have a great feeling that you know exactly what it is and roughly how it's made. And now that you know that just because it looks like a chemical name, it's all natural and plant-made. First stop in this process begins at your average coconut processing plant. At most modern day coconut processing facilities, there are machines that de-husk the coconut, capturing the water inside and removing the meat, which is the white part. The husks are sold for various companies to turn into fibers and into material or grind them up to be put in facial scrubs. There are so many uses for this durable husk. The water is sold to beverage companies and the meat is left to be packaged, shredded, or sold to oil making companies. When the coconut oil making company buys the meat, the next step is to heat it to 99 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the melting point of the coconut oil, and press it. This is similar to how olives are pressed and release their oils. Once the meat is smashed and pressed over and over, the oil spills and is captured in containers. Then it either gets sold as is, like for cooking or moves into cosmetic manufacturing facilities, or it's one step closer to becoming the skincare ingredient, cocoa glucoside. Next in the process of cocoa glucoside is the oil is placed into a large metal column. And again, it's heated into its liquid phase. The purpose of this column is to allow different molecules within the oil to separate. The lighter weight and shorter chain oil molecules rise to the surface, and the longer chain fatty acids remain at the bottom. The heat is slowly increased further and further until the lightweight molecules vaporize, which means they evaporate right into the air, right off the top of the surface of the oil, where there's another tube waiting to capture these fatty gases and cool them back down and away from the rest of the oil. This process is called condensation, it's the same physical reaction that causes the wet condensation to form on the outside of your cold glass on a hot, humid day. Now that we have the volatile and most reactive fatty acids of this coconut oil, they're captured through the top of vaporization and ready to be blended with the glucoside portion of the surfactant. That brings us to the sugar and how it gets to the glucoside. This part's actually pretty easy. First, the sugar is heated and melted into a syrup type mixture. Then the sugar, which is usually made from sugarcane or corn, is mixed with citric acid, a naturally occurring acid typically extracted from citrus peels or the fruit, which by itself is cool because it's the use of recycling the unused parts of citrus fruits in the processing centers. Anyways, the sugar is heated and the molecules are moving around rapidly. This makes them more reactive. In this agitated, heated state, the citric acid is able to create a chemical reaction and provide a hydrogen atom to the OH group of the glucose forming a chemical ending called an ester. This ester molecule is sticky, meaning it wants to attach to something, and in our case, the volatile coconut oil that we just vaporized are perfect. Once the volatile coconut oil is mixed with this reactive sticky sugar, cocoa glucoside is born. The cocoa oil side of the reactive molecule loves to attach itself to other oils, such as makeup, sunscreen, or sebum, you know, your face oil while the opposite side wants to attach itself to water, forming foamy bubbles and wash away we are accustomed to with an easy rinse. Okay, so there you have it. Cocoa glucoside is a marriage of volatile coconut oil fats mixed with excited sugar molecules, just waiting to help clean your face. It's eco-friendly, it's gentle, and it's plant-made.